Hey guys, good morning. Welcome to another edition of Motorcyclist MC Commute. You guys know the deal. Today we're gonna to be riding to the motorcyclist office in Southern California on Husqvarna's 2019 Spark Pillin 701. So let's throw on the helmet and go for a ride. Well, here it is guys. Husqvarna's 2019 Spark Pillin 701. This is an all new street bike from Husqvarna for the 2019 model year and this is part of Husqvarna's four bike street bike lineup they have the Vitpillin 401 the Vitpillin 701 and then the Svartpillin 401 and the Svartpillin 701 and it's a very nice looking bike it looks a little bit flat tracky a little bit dark and almost gothic like which I like. I really like how everything's blacked out. All you can see on it that has any form of color is the triple clamp, uh, the foot peg bracket, and then of course the engine side cover. I do like that. I also like the fit and finish here. I like this quality material. I love the headlight on this bike, the shape of the fuel tank, the seat. It all looks very premium until you look at this. A lot of wires hanging out, some labels, a little label on the rear master cylinder, a label on the caliper. Uh, those things take away from the premium feel of this motorcycle. So I think if Husqvarna can clean that up, they'll have something really quality on their hands. But until now, it's a little bit, a little bit unfinished in my opinion. But overall, 7 out of 10 in the looks department. Let's hop on this bike and see what it's like to ride. What do you guys think of the sound? Let's turn off traction control, make sure that's off so we can do some wheelies later. I know you guys always like the wheelies. What do you guys think of the sound? Sounds like a thumper because, well, it is. So hopping on this motorcycle, the ergonomics, it's very, very slim. It's a slim bike. Obviously, it's got that single cylinder engine which doesn't take up a lot of space so they can make this bike super compact and it is slim between the knees I like how this fuel tank has a nice cutout on either side so you can slip your knees in there foot pegs aren't too low aren't too high KTM and Husqvarna always do a good job with the ergonomics. They always generally have street bikes that have rather lower position foot pegs. Not so low that you're going to drag the foot pegs when you're leaning, but low enough to give good comfort for guys who have long legs like me. So they've always done that ever since pretty much forever that I can remember riding these bikes and I, and I like that feature. Seat isn't, seat not only looks good, but it's decently comfortable for riding around town. Handlebar, that's one area where this motorcycle differs compared to the Vit Pillin. And I like how narrow the handlebar is. It makes it easy to split traffic like we're doing here. I think the handlebar has too much rearward sweep. It almost kind of feels like you're riding a tricycle with the, how the handlebar is positioned rearward. And we're off. Back to the handlebar. I do like that it's got a nice upright bend, but like I said before, the sweep's a little bit too rearward. Rearward makes it feel kind of like a tricycle. I wish the sweep was a little bit farther out, would give it a little bit more commanding stance, but not bad. Fortunately, swapping out the handlebar is, is a Torx bit away from, from easiness. Cruising at 65 miles per hour here. This gauge instrument cluster is not the most easy to read. As you can see, everything's very compact. It's loaded with information. It's got a fuel gauge, it's 
you've got gear position, speed, fuel mileage, all that good stuff, but it's just so compact and hard to read. They really could have done a better job fitting something bigger. I mean, it looks aesthetically pleasing, but the function of it isn't the best. And away we go. Back to the instrumentation. We've got dual trip meters, so we know how many miles we've gone, and then we have a fuel range uh, feature here that gives us, lets us know when we need gas. On to the engine. 693cc liquid-cooled single cylinder engine. It's a big displacement single. And what I like about this engine is how much torque it has. It has a lot of low-end torque. It's making in excess of 40 foot-pound torque for right around 4,000 RPM. It's a lot of torque. It actually peaks at 48 foot-pound right around 6,900 RPM, I believe. That's what we measured on our dyno. It also makes a ton of horsepower, 69 horsepower, almost 70 horsepower out of this out of this single cylinder engine. That's a lot of power. It's certainly not slow, but at the same time, this engine has excessive vibration. It vibrates so much you feel the vibration in the clutch lever and the handlebar and the seat. It vibrates a lot. I know Husqvarna and KTM tried to quell vibration by putting another counterbalancer or updating the engine recently, but they still have some work to do. This engine vibrates way too much. A lot of torque. A lot of torque, a lot of acceleration. Sound of it, the engine sounds okay, but it's kind of sounds like a appliance. It just kind of like putter, 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 putter. It doesn't have that exhilarating sound of a multi-cylinder engine. And that vibration, you just feel it through all the controls all the time. You know, if you're a guy who just kind of rides around town and wants that charismatic feel of the engine, then I can understand how you could like it, but it's just so excessive, I would get annoyed very fast by it. And it blurs the vision of the mirrors. You can't see anything behind you because the engine's just vibrating so much. Husqvarna's Vartpillen 701 has ride-by wire throttles. So there's not an actual mechanical connection between the uh, throttle and the throttle bodies. And the throttle response is, it's okay, but it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like a well-sorted mechanical throttle system. It feels synthetic, it doesn't feel natural feels disconnected in a way. There's also a lot of throttle pull. You really have to twist the throttle quite a bit for her to accelerate, which is weird. A lot of play in the throttle. A lot of play, not free play, but actual play when you twist it. In terms of packaging, we talked about the ergonomics. I like how I'm positioned on this bike. I like how slim it is, the seats decently comfortable handlebar it's okay what I really like is how how light this bike is with a 3.1 gallon fuel tank gassed up it weighs in right around 369 pounds it's a very light motorcycle easy to ride easy to put where you want so I like how light it is I like how easy the handling is but going through that rough road the suspension the suspension definitely delivers a rough ride this is not a comfortable ride on this fart pill in 701 got an inverted fork up front from wp and a standard shock absorber again from wp at the rear the fork has fixed preload you can't adjust the spring preload on it but you can adjust the rebound and compression dampen, damping. Rebounds on the right here, compressions on the left. They have these cool little knobs right here. Makes it really easy, easy to adjust. Other street bikes, you actually need a, a flathead screwdriver or they're at also going to Allen key heads too. So you need a tool to adjust it, not with these Husqvarna WP KTM suspension. They always put these nice little buttons on there that make adjustment easy. I like that. 
Good job. I also like that this bike has sliders, has like a rubber o-ring around each fork tube, which lets you know how much travel you're using. You can't adjust the preload, so you can't really really can't adjust if you are bottoming the fork, you can't really add preload to help prevent that. So it's kind of weird that they even offer that that o-ring travel bumper, but I still think it's cool to have and it looks neat too. Quick shifter is a nice thing to have. You don't have to use the clutch. You just tap on the shift lever and it goes into the next gear. Six speed transmission on this bike. I do like that feature. Transmission has a little bit too much throw in it. You really have to move that lever a lot to, to get it to shift gears. Other manufacturers' transmissions feel a little tighter. This thing feels a little sloppy. A little sloppy and a little bit more throw uh, than I would like. Not as precise feeling. But it's got a quick shifter up and down and that's a nice feature. This motorcycle benefits from a rear linkage, so it has a linkage. It's not just direct mount between the frame and swing arm. They love it. While the fork doesn't offer any preload adjustment, the shock does, so you can modify the, the ride height of the rear end of the bike based on preference or if you're carrying a passenger while this motorcycle looks like it doesn't have a passenger seat. It actually does, and I like that. I like that, that subtle detail. We were riding over the rough road earlier and the suspension does ride a little bit rough. On the smoother stuff, it does a little bit better, but it still has a bouncy ride. It's a real bouncy suspension. If I owned this bike, I would either slow the rebound down a lot or maybe revalve it and just give it a more calmer feel it seems so hyperactive and so bouncy even over these little small bumps but i do like how maneuverable it is it's a very easy motorcycle to 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 ride and get in and out of traffic on good handling really easy to put where you want super nimble i do like that getting on the freeway here we're in top gear 70 miles per hour you feel that vibration through the pegs, feel it through the seat, feel it everywhere. Let's talk about the brakes, guys. We've got a radial mount hydraulic disc brake up front, single piston hydraulic disc brake out back. This bike comes with ABS, so you never have to worry about locking up the brakes. If you grab the front brake lever too hard, the rear brake pedal too much, you're never going to skid to stop. Unfortunately, you can't turn off ABS, so even if you wanted to skid to stop for fun, you're not going to be able to do that because this bike doesn't allow you to disable ABS, which is strange because most KTM and Husqvarna street bikes do allow you to do that. This bike weighs so little, 369 pounds, that it doesn't really need a double disc brake. It stops well, a lot of fork dive, a lot of movement from the front suspension, but I still would like to see dual disc brakes, especially for the asking price of this motorcycle. $12,000 for this thing. For $12,000, it should absolutely have dual radio mount front disc brakes. Let's pass these guys, we're going too slow. I do like that this bike has a nice nice front brake lever adjustment uh, position dial so you can you can move the position of the brake lever in or out based on the size of your hands it's also got a nice position adjuster on the hydraulically actuated clutch which is a, definitely a nice touch i'm not really sure why this bike has a hydraulic clutch you could probably get away with a cable actuated setup but to be fair this this clutch the the hydraulic hydraulic action really allows for a real light lever feel. It's really easy to manipulate the clutch. So braking performance definitely gets the job done. It works good. Rear brakes nice and strong too, but that suspension's so spongy. You use the rear brake and the rear end just squats down crazy style. You use the front brake, the front end dives crazy style. This 
bike definitely could use some suspension work. We haven't talked about the wheels yet. This bike rolls on an 18 inch front, 17 inch rear wheel combo. I'm not really sure why it rides on an 18 inch front. Typically flat track bikes ride a 19, a 19 combo. So you'd think it would have a 19, but it has an 18 instead. Obviously, since you're riding on the road, 17 inch wheels would be the, the most optimum. Realistically, you can get good rubber and 18 inch wheels now too, but 17 is kind of standard. So not exactly sure why it has an 18 inch rear wheel, kind of strange to me. Wheels are shod with Pirelli's MT60 rubber. It's a flat track and spidered tubeless tire, flat track block pattern. I've ridden this tire a lot on, on other bikes like Ducati's original Scrambler 800. And these tires work really good on the road. They have a ton of grip. Pirelli really knows how to engineer tires with tremendous road grip. And these flat track and spider tires are no different. They have a lot of grip on the road. All right, guys, we're getting to work here. Getting close to the office. Here comes the wheelie test. Who's ready for the wheelie test? Yeah, she wheelies pretty good. Oh, yeah, she wheelies good. Real good. Really good in that synthetic throttle is not as bad as I thought it would be. It definitely is a little bit perky jerky though. All right, back it in test. She will not back it in. ABS does not allow for backing it in. So good job on the wheelie test. Bad job on the ABS or the back it in test, Puskavarna. All right, guys, we're nearing the motorcyclist office here in Southern California. Unfortunately, we're not gonna do any Q&A today. We didn't do that on Instagram, so we apologize. We'll try to get that going on the next installment of MC Commute. If you guys wanna know more about this Husqvarna Svartpilen 701, please log on to MotorcyclistOnline.com. There's a first ride review there from the international press launch this spring. There's also a review on cycleworld.com, so go on their website and type in Svartpilen 701 First Ride if you want to read more about this motorcycle. Uh, would I buy this motorcycle for $12,000? Absolutely not. I would not buy this motorcycle for $12,000. It vibrates too much, the suspension's too bouncy, the fit and finish isn't good enough, doesn't have dual disc brakes. And yeah, I just wouldn't buy this bike for 12 grand. Absolutely not. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate your guys' time today. Make sure to subscribe to our channel here at Motorcyclist Mag on YouTube. And we'll see you guys next time.